Hey, what's up guys? So in this video, I'm going to talk about RU58841 and finasteride and how they measure up to one another in terms of preventing hair loss, their side effects and effectiveness for androgenic alopecia. So let's start. Hey, welcome back everybody. My name is Matt and you're watching my hair loss and hair transplant related channel. So if you are new, make sure you get my free ebook, five things I wished I had known before my hair transplant, which can help you a lot during your hair transplant research. And now let's come back to the topic of RU58841 and finasteride. Frankly, both agents, finasteride and RU, can be classified as anti-androgens in general, but their mechanism of action is different simply because the effects of testosterone and DHT can be suppressed either by suppressing their synthesis, like with finasteride, or by restricting testosterone and DHT from activating the androgen receptor in the first place, like the RU is doing, okay? It's restricting these androgens from binding with the androgen receptors of the hair follicle, in our example. Now let's talk about finasteride first. Finasteride is such an anti-androgen which restricts your body's selective tissues like skin, prostate, liver, and hair follicle from producing DHT. It does that by blocking type 2 5-alpha reductase and thus allowing less testosterone to be converted into DHT. This will result in roughly 70% lower plasma and tissue DHT concentrations and about 40-50% to lower scalp DHT concentration by a long-term use of finasteride. So basically finasteride allows less DHT to be produced in the androgen target tissues like the hair follicle and thus it will result in less amount of DHT affecting the hair follicle in the first place. Finasteride limitations in treating androgenic alopecia are that it works exclusively for the DHT. Finasteride has zero effects on testosterone, which will in fact increase as a result of inhibiting 5-alpha reductase with finasteride or dutasteride. And this progressive accumulation of testosterone in your scalp over time will still cause hair loss. Maybe not as fast as it would have been by full presence of DHT, but androgenic alopecia will progress. This has been shown also in a four-year PROSCAR trial, which is 5 mg on finasteride, where levels of testosterone did in fact increase modestly to even significantly by patients with low baseline testosterone levels. So additional use of an agent that acts directly at the androgen receptor level and restricts the excess testosterone from binding with the androgen receptor can be a win for a long-term androgenic alopecia prevention. Now, this is when RU58841 comes into the equation. RU, on the other hand, is a different but also more complex of an anti-androgenic agent than finasteride. First and foremost, RU58841 has nothing to do with 5-alpha reductase inhibition as such. It also doesn't affect androgen synthesis in your body because it is only used topically. Neither it lowers the androgen production in your scalp by using it topically. So what the hell does it do? Well, it only restricts the androgens like testosterone and DHT from activating the androgen receptor. That's why it's also call, called androgen receptor antagonist, which means that it has the opposite effect on the androgen receptor compared to DHT or testosterone. Androgen receptor antagonist like RU has affinity for the androgen receptor, but no, effect, no efficacy on the receptor whatsoever. So by using RU topically on the scalp, the androgen concentration of testosterone and DHT in the scalp tissue should remain unchanged. I'm sure that many of you will be interested in like, hey, does it have side effects or not? And this has been unfortunately shown only in this one animal study where RU plasma metabolites have been discovered, but only in one out of 40 monkeys after six months of topical RU application. In another report, it has been also shown that RU did not have any effects on serum DHT levels except of extreme doses. We can, however, conclude that the side effect likelihood from RU will depend on the dose as it is the case with finasteride. In case you expect some extensive evidence of RU's efficacy during either human trials or randomized control trials on humans, then you will have to keep waiting because such evidence doesn't exist, unfortunately. In the same animal study on apes I mentioned earlier, they were also comparing RU and finasteride 
which is the only study comparing finasteride and RU face to face, the results shown that RU58841 had a better effect on antigen follicle diameter and increase of villus follicle diameter was also better with RU. More precisely with RU, it was 26% increase versus 12% increase with finasteride. Now I'm sure some of you guys may also know the CB0301 or Clascoteron topical agent with anti-androgenic properties. And and this upcoming anti-hair loss treatment branded as Brizula could be potentially released in 2022. Well, this CB0301 works on the same mechanism of action as RU does. Uh, which one is better will really depend, like which one has a higher binding affinity to the androgen receptor, which one has longer half-life, better transdermal absorption, and better long-term safety profile overall. The mechanism of action of topical Clascoteron or CB0301 has been also described by Casio Pia that is developing it as a direct inhibition of testosterone and DHT binding to local hair follicle androgen receptors. So basically the same as RU58841, maybe CB0301 is going to be better than RU and maybe not, okay? So as there are no clinically conducted randomized controlled trials on the efficacy of RU on like terminal hair growth, hair shaft elongation, uh, or hair diameter improvements, we can tell for now, okay? But maybe CB0301 will become what RU58841 could have already been in 1990s as its research uh, had been interrupted out of a sudden by a company called uh, Prostracon. Let me know if I pronounce it well. And there are some rumors that the two initial trials turned out actually very well and the results showed similar or even better efficacy to finasteride, but we don't know uh, the exact numbers, of course. Personally, I'm really curious about Brizula's topical Clascoteron cream. However, I'm sure that using a 5AR inhibitor in conjunction with androgen receptor antagonist like Clascoteron, uh, CB0301 or RU will yield the best results long term as I don't know anybody who would uh, be fine just with using finasteride or dutasteride long term because we know that by using finasteride or dutasteride, your testosterone levels increase modestly uh, to even significantly by patients with low baseline testosterone levels. So using an agent that acts directly at the androgen receptor level and restricts the excess of testosterone from binding with the androgen receptor can be a win for a long-term androgenic alopecia prevention, okay? So uh, now, which one is better to use for hair loss prevention, finasteride or RU? Well, ideally you should use both agents because even if RU shows a higher binding affinity for the human androgen receptor than testosterone, the affinity of RU is still slightly lower than the one of DHT. So it's questionable whether you can only manage your hair loss with an anti-androgen with a higher binding affinity than the one of testosterone, but lower than the one of DHT. So yeah, that's the question uh, to be discussed upon. Since RU is not FDA approved, I don't suggest it unless you use it for research purposes, of course. Uh, so uh, here is like the conclusion of, um, you know, if you are a new, if you are like a new guy to androgenic alopecia and you'd like to prevent your future hair loss effectively, then short term, uh, stick to the old school finasteride or generic version of it that I'm using also. I cut it in a quarters. So you can also consider topical finasteride, of course, but long-term you will have to address testosterone as well. Potential treatments to do so would be RU58841, CB0301. For all you guys who are like impatient, uh, you can also get uh, the CB0301 already. Like right now you can order it all online, of course, for research purposes, but uh, there is no guarantee that it's gonna be like exceptionally better than the RU58841 and also CB0301. CB0301 is also much more expensive as opposed to RU. So if you want to try it out for research purposes, I would probably start with RU58841, okay? So uh, that was it on topic of finasteride and RU and how they kind of measure up against each other in terms of preventing hair loss. I think of them as complements, long-term, uh, short-term, I think it's more important to use finasteride and long-term, of course, both. Okay, so uh, that was it, guys, for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in another video. Take care.